Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to our series, our semi-final series between Siberian and Increase. They have been fighting it out in Wi-Fi's tournament of Game Keys tonight, which is a uh, community-run tournament uh, where uh, players are fighting it out for a chance to win a haul of great games purchased in the uh, in the summer sales on Origin and Steam. Here with me is, of course, Fatal Saint, and tonight, if you're just joining us, we have been casting a couple of games, the first couple of games from this series between Siberian and Increase, two players who made it through all the way to the semi-finals. We are now up to game three, so the winner of this game, in this best of three, will go through to the finals for a crack at winning the biggest haul of games. What have you thought about the game so far tonight, Fatal? Uh, second game, very straightforward base pin, which we just saw that was just brutalizing the Soviet. He couldn't even exit his base. The, the Soviet sniper got almost 40 kills at Vet 3 and everything, and it w still wasn't enough. And some nice use of smoke to bail out his vehicles, and very nice use of incendiary rounds on the stolen MG42 to actually kill some of those light vehicles. But it still wasn't enough. He was base pinned, he had no resources, and that was basically over from almost the get go, because he couldn't break it effectively enough and not quick enough. Um, but in game one, that, that, ta that tank battle just baffles the mind, really. Yeah, it was it was really, really nuts. One of the more entertaining moments that we've seen in Code 2 thus far. Hopefully, we're going to have a chance to see some more entertaining moments now as we go into this third match now between Siberian and Increase. Uh, of course, Siberian, he had almost a clean sheet win in his last game. He won the game with 490 VPs in the bag compared to having drained his opponent down to almost 100 in his first game despite losing. So he has opted to go for the Ostia in this game three. And we're at the five second mark, Fatal. Let's get it on. I'm ready. Okay, so let's unpause in three, two, one, unpause, six, seven, eight, nine. See, I got it right this time. <laughs> <laughs> this time you could count. All I, of a sudden I can you learn how to time. count. Yeah, yeah. I, I took some Let's, lessons while we took a break. I'm, I'm going to be interested to see if we see some funky build order from Increase again as the Soviets, because it didn't really pan out last time. Maybe this time when he's starting in the south instead, it might be more possible. The, the MG base pin might be a bit harder, but it's still possible. You can still go for the cutoff, especially with that newly added hole in the hedge just at the center VP. You can just go right there, put your MG on the other side of the hedge, go cut him off from the left-hand side resources, at the same time cutting off, cut him off from the right-hand side resources with the other cutoff point, and then just try to contain the Soviet in his base. So it's still possible to do a base pin even when positions are reversed. But I think, you know, going for that super early sniper, sure he got a lot of kills, but it didn't really pan out because I think he lost quite a lot of map control in the initial stages of the game. Yeah, he uh, he lost, well, yeah, I mean, very quickly he found himself on the receiving end of just having very little resources because, you know, typically the base pin is something that you work up to over, you know, over a period of sort of 10 minutes or so, by which point, yeah. even if the base pin is successful, you at least have the resources to do something about it after that point, but he just didn't, did he? He, he, couldn't, he couldn't have taken it even if he wanted to. No, he was lacking fuel the entire game as he was cut off for almost the entirety of, of that round, game two, between Siberian Increase on Longer Sky. But we have the same build order. He went conscript, combat engineer, he's putting his tier one building up, so we're most likely going to see that fast M3. Hopefully it can live a bit longer this time, even though sacrificing it last time meant that it stole one MG42 from Siberian. It still didn't really live that long, it didn't really do that much damage. And, you know, and I guess he's going to go for the same build order, M3, Sniper, and then more conscripts, I guess. I guess so. I mean, it's it didn't really, after something doesn't work out the first time, typically, you know, you, you'd be thinking, how can I reevaluate this? How can I change it up? But uh, he's going to stick with it. So maybe this is just his strategy. Maybe this is the way that he always plays, and to do something else would just be... Would just be, you know, sacrilegious. Maybe he's been extremely successful in his other games in uh, this tournament or in auto match games, for example, and he just felt that he could do that better. You know, I should have been able to break the base pin faster. I didn't. I messed up somewhere. I'm going to try this one more time. Well, he only has one more chance this time. Last time, he had a little bit of leeway. He could afford to lose it. This time, he can't afford to lose. If he loses now, he is knocked out and Siberian advances in his place. Yeah, we did have a very early 
cutoff protection from the first MG out from Siberian. It's been sitting there since it hit the field and it's just waiting for something to come harass as he has focused to go capping on the right hand side of the map while the Soviet player increase has focused on the left hand side. So they basically have 50% of the match map each right now and that MG is actually going to move away from his cutoff now. Well, we have the first M3 out. We have a engineer in there, which is presumably upgrading to flamers as we yep. speak. Flamers are upgrading. Soon to hit that squad. There we go. Flamers upgraded. So now he needs to start dealing some damage because I don't think a single bullet has actually been shot at each other in this game. No, so far. I don't believe so. It's been a very uh, <laughs> pacifist right. game. Yeah, Siberian on the right and increase on the left. Let's just sit here for the entire game and see what happens. And we'll just fight over the middle BP. <laughs> That's usually what happens. <laughs> He's found some prime targets in this Pyo squad in the building. He pops out of the building, pops back in, and pops out on the other side of, of the building, trying to just avoid this M3 with a flamer. Gets the Grenadier in the building. He might be able to actually pop out of the door there and get a Faust off. That's exactly what Siberian is going to aim to do. He's going to get the Faust animation started. The M3 is trying to move away. Through the through walls. Through two windows. <laughs> now it went through the windows. I swear. Oh, there through the windows. The okay. So, well, that yeah. M3 bit does seem in pretty spectacular fashion. You know, M3 we're seeing so many M3s, but they just always seem to die. I, I don't know. I think the the fad might be dying out a little bit. Just they, they just rush it in too quickly. Yeah, because you know, Aim Strong and, and Symbiosis, they used their M3s really well. They kept them alive for ages. But then you have this the, the school of player, which is much more like how Seth used his, which is just loads of them and just keep on rushing them until your yeah. opponent gives up out of you know <laughs> sheer. I don't know what to call it. Exhaust. Bite. <laughs> I don't know exactly, but yeah, I, I think uh, especially uh, Aimstrong, for example, he only went for one M3, and he always put guards in it just to counter that Flammenwerfer, to chase it around the field, to be able to actually keep up with the Flammenwerfer's speed. Oh, nice rifle aim! Oh, the air squad means uh -oh. that the air squad is not going to be fighting more today. Oh wow, leg blown off. Arms Everything blown, blown off. off. Torsos everywhere. Imps. That looked painful. <laughs> that was painful. <laughs> so, 35 munitions down the drain, and a Comet Engineer squad bites the dust. Uh, very early, nice win for Siberian. So, one M3 down, one Comet Engineer down, and increase is starting off really bad. Well, we have Tier 2 up from Siberian now. He's uh, gone very quickly to Tier 2. It's wow. the exact same build order that he had Super last time. Super speed again. He is Around going for that very quick or so. scout car. Yep, a very, very quick tier two. And here we go, here's a scout car. That is going to be able to force away the sniper, which is trying to dislodge one of the grenadiers in the building. So he's going to actually retreat after seeing the second grenadier trying to engage him. Uh, we do have some mines being laid. I believe that Siberian noticed that with the scout car, so he doesn't just run right over it. So after getting the flamethrowers, Soviet player increased has spent all of his munitions on planting mines all over the field. But so far they haven't really been paying out for himself. They actually caused him more damage than the enemy. Super quick commander choice for increase going for guards motor coordination tactics and getting a guard squad on the field after seeing that quick tier 2 scout car out from Siberia. We have two things on the build order right now for Siberian. We've got a Panzer Grand Air Squad, which is almost done, and a half track is almost done as well. Siberian not being just as aggressive as last time. He doesn't really want to go for the cutoff yet. He's trying to basically fight it's a bit harder and cast harass. It is a little yeah, bit harder. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's still very much possible, but it's not quite. It's not quite as easy. It's not quite as straightforward. Just, it's just going no, it's not that one to, ne to the, you know one sector to the next sector to the cutoff. It's You've got a lot more that you that you feel you need to cap first. Scout car most likely going to be topped off by those pyros. He's just waiting for the conscript squad to actually leave. Uh, let's see, we do have 18 8s are already ticked, so he could possibly get a nice 18 8 off on that scout car if Siberia is not paying attention enough. But here's this passing area squad on the left hand side now. And even though there are two conscripts, one extremely damaged and one down to five men, but still fairly healthy. I think that combined with this scout car is not going to be any problem. So it's actually going to prompt an instant retreat from both conscripts on the left hand side. So he can go harassing those territories over there and nab that fuel away from the Soviets. And again, basically deprive him of any resources. 
If he loses that fuel, he's gonna be stuck in the same situation as last game. Here we go. Flame is upgraded. Whoa, torching that card squad. Wow. Doing nice a ton burst. of damage. Didn't get many kills, but just the damage just halved almost instantly. Yeah, we doesn't have we, we don't have the the field infirmary on the HQ either, so they're not going to be able to heal up. He can reinforce them at the HQ, but he can't heal them yet. And he doesn't have enough manpower to actually do anything about it. And we do have a, a super quick tier two this time, however, from increase. So this is something different. So he's not going to gamble and think and hope that maybe I can get enough fuel to get tier three or tier four up. I'm just gonna go for tier two instantly because I know Siberian's gonna play aggressive again. He's got his flammer murphy, he has his tools now, he's going to pin me in my base again. So this time I'm gonna stop him instantly instead of waiting 20 minutes. Nice rifle aim on the snipers. Jeez, this flamer is, uh, it's only been on the field for a, for a minute or two and already it's, it's practically got increased back into his base again. Yeah, this is basically just a repeat of last game. Uh, slightly different. He's going to use that Flammer to reinforce in the field and also contain the Soviet player in his base. And at the same time, Soviet player is building his tier 2 building. It's up, but he's waiting for the manpower required to get an AT gun on the field to actually be able well, to deal with the two damage. Oh my Ooh. god! Wow! Hell of a rifle nade. Takes out wow. four guards instantaneously. And here comes the Flammer Werfer. He's just like, oh, you lost most of your guards, did you? Add some fire, but he gets instantly buffed and uses smoke. Was that a basically a, a oh wow. wow another one over the hedge? So much manpower being bled. Was that an instant choice from Saberi in that situation after getting pinned, or did he have the commander already selected? Did you see that? Uh, Siberian had already picked, uh, yeah, okay, okay, he already had it picked. Guards are trying to stop the German army outside of the Soviet base. It's not going to be long until he can just basically walk right into the Soviet base again. This is going even faster than last game somehow. Yeah, this is uh, pretty brutal. And there's a bunker coming up on the cutoff as well. This is just... This is looking like a 1-2 knockout. Very, very brutal so far. Still on 500 VPs and already he's bled his opponent down to 372. With that bunker coming up as well, forward reinforcement from the Flamma Werfer getting repaired oh. by the Piles. Rifle nades everywhere. That Over squad, the they are having a field day with those rifle nades. He can't even see them because they're on the other side of the hedge with true sight. Uh, he, he, he can't see it. <laughs> he doesn't know that the rifle nade is coming. Uh, I just put on the Fog of War and I can't see that Grenadier oh, squad. Is, our, is the AT oh, gun. The, nice. He could still use smoke if needed. Maybe he could. No, no line of sight on the vehicles anymore and they reverse into safety. But AT gun might be able to dislodge the German army at least. He's going to be able to destroy that bunker. He's going to be able to force off the vehicles. He's turning it into an MG42 bunker. Yeah, but at the same time, I don't know. He has no resources as usual. <laughs> wow, that thing actually is taking a lot of damage. It's going to go down in a couple of hits. If it hits. No, he cancelled it. He cancelled the MG42 because he could see he was going to yeah. go down. He was going to lose his investment. Both the pack and uh, Germ uh, the, the Soviet AT gun actually got a, a damage buff, so now they, I think that was a 4 hit on a bunker? Yeah, I believe so. Oh, oh another nice! Nah, uh, I didn't quite get the, get the hit in. It wasn't uh, quite as juicy as his previous ones. <laughs> Oh, that was brutal on the on the conscripts. We actually have, uh, if you look at the guard squad, uh, we have a use of the merch ability. So one of the, the six guards are actually a conscript. With oh, a DP, yeah. I think. Yeah, he's got a DP light machine gun. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's broken the, the base pin. But at so the same dope. time, I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. He's trying to leave his base right Only now. The only problem is now rails. that he just has literally no territory. That's it. Well, he's he's been able to slow down the. Oh wow! Oh wow! Oh wow! The crits! The crits! The flamer crits! Goodbye, AT gun. Nice oh. knowing you. And Not far away that from was that the only bit of AT either. that the Soviet player had. Yeah, he overextended and now. That's, and increased nose. That's that came he overextended. Over.
Damn. He had Over. another sniper cooking. He could have easily cancelled the sniper to get a second AT gun, but I guess he didn't want to go for the long haul again. He, I, I guess he, he felt a bit base pinned, even forcing off the vehicles. This is, uh, well, that was a... That was a, that was a quickie. <laughs> yeah, quickie is right. It was, um, it was a particularly brutal game, that one. Well, yeah, um, so somehow it even worked out better this time, even though the cutoff move uh, in game two was brutal as well. This just really sealed the deal even quicker. I think he managed to get all of the territories into his own hands, the Siberian, I mean, after uh, initially getting the, the cutoff move in effect when the flammer were for hit. Yeah, it was... Um... It was just extremely well played by him, uh, and particularly to be able to pull off the base pin in the way that he did from the north position as well. Very impressive, something that you don't that you don't often see. Um, you, you didn't often see it in Vico either, because um, obviously no. it's the same map. But uh, that does mean that it goes 2-1 to Siberian. Siberian moves through to the finals, which means he is going to be playing against the winner of the other semi-finalist. So we're going to take a quick break now, and then we will be back with our next series. So don't go anywhere, folks. We will be right back in just a moment.